Hello Grade 12s and a warm welcome to all of you. At the end of the year, you will be required to write an NSC or National Senior Certificate examination. In order to prepare for this examination, it is important for you to know your work and therefore you have to study all the relevant content. However, it is equally important for you to know the skills that we teach you. Because although the examination is testing your content knowledge, they also testing your ability to extract, interpret, analyze, and argue. But don't stress, I will help you revise these skills so that you can better prepare for your examination. In today's lesson, we are going to start with history paper one, and we're gonna take a closer look at question one. Now question one is a source-based section, and it focuses on understanding the origins of the Cold War. We are going to start off by revising the different ways of asking definition questions and how you should go about to answer it. But remember, all of the skills that we are revising today will also apply to all of the other topics that we cover in Grade 12. Okay, so let's start off by briefly taking a look at all of the things that we are going to cover in today's lesson. Firstly, I'm going to give you a very brief outline of the origins of the Cold War and what content you should focus on when preparing for this section. Then, for the rest of the lesson, we are going to revise your source-based skills. Our focus today is going to take a closer look at how the examiner will ask you to define a concept and what your answers should look like. Let's start with a brief outline of the origins of the Cold War. When you prepare for the section of work, it is important that you understand that the Cold War was an ideological war between two world powers of the time, America and the Soviet Union, capitalism versus communism. You must know how America and the Soviet Union both attempted to spread their influence in Europe after World War II. This includes things like the Iron Curtain, America's policy of containment, which consisted of the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plans, and the Soviet Communist Information Bureau, or Common Form, and the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, or Comicon. You must also study the Berlin Crisis, the period between 1948 and 1961 in Berlin, with specific focus on the Berlin blockade and the Berlin Wall. Now remember, in accordance to the Grade 12 CAPS document and the examination guidelines, the examiner can focus on any of these aspects when they examine you in your NSC examination at the end of the year. So it is very important that you study all of this content in preparation for that examination. Now that we know the content that we must study, let's focus on the skills that we will be examined on. Remember, the examiner is not only going to test your content knowledge, they are also going to test the skills that we need to study history effectively. And the skills that we're going to focus on today is how to define concepts. OK, so before we start, Let's first take a look at why we study certain concepts. As historians, concepts help us to better understand the historical events that we are researching. If we want to understand the Cold War, then we must have a general understanding of what a Cold War is, and we must be able to understand it within the context of the time that we are researching. This applies to other concepts like communism, capitalism, containment, satellite states, and all other concepts pertaining to the Cold War, which you will be able to find in your textbook. Once you grasp these concepts, you will better understand the Cold War. Now, in your NSC examination, the examiner will examine the skills that you will need as a historian to research history effectively. Remember, History is the study of past events. Historians are the detectives of history, and it is their job to try to reconstruct the truth based on the available evidence. Their task is to collect or extract all the relevant evidence from various primary and secondary sources. 
They will then interpret this evidence. Once the evidence has been interpreted, they will evaluate its reliability in order to know whether or not it is a credible source of information. Then the historian will evaluate its usefulness as well as the limitations of the evidence in helping them understand the historical event. They will then corroborate the evidence with other sources by focusing on the similarities and differences. Once this is complete, they will use the information they have gathered to write an article, essay, thesis, or a book about the historical event. Now, all these skills will be examined in your NSC examination. Each skill will fall within a specific category of questioning. There are three categories. Level one questions will test your ability to extract evidence from various sources. Level two questions will test your ability to interpret evidence from various sources. And level three questions will test your ability to evaluate a source's reliability, usefulness, and limitations, as well as test your ability to compare similarities and differences from various sources. In your NSC examination, you will be expected to define various concepts. These definition questions will fall within two categories. The first category is level one, which is a basic generic definition of a concept. The second category is level two, which is defining the concept within the context of the historical event. Now, when you are writing your NSC examination, you are going to have to be able to distinguish between the two. And that is what we are going to practice today. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the first category, a level one definition question. The aim of this type of definition question is to test your basic understanding of a concept. This means that when you give your answer, you don't need to define it within the context of the historical event. All that you need to do is you need to give a general definition of the concept. Now, how do you know when the question that you are reading is a level one definition question? It's very easy. The words in the question will look as follows. Define the term in your own words. When you see these words in the question, then you know that you are dealing with a level one definition question. And all that you need to do is to give a general definition of the concept. Okay, so let's look at an example. The question in front of you reads as follows. Define the term satellite states in your own words. Now, when you look at this question, which part of the question tells us that it's a level one definition question? Yes, it's the part that says in your own words. Okay. So now that we know that this is a level one definition question, we have to answer it. But first we need to know what the question is asking us to define. So let's read the question again so that we can understand what the question is asking us to define. So the question says, define the term satellite states in your own words. So what do you think the question is asking us to define? Correct. The question is asking us to define what a satellite state is. Okay, so are we ready to give our answer? No, not quite yet, because before we give our answer, we first have to check the mark allocation. Okay, so I know that this might sound silly, but Taking note of the mark allocation is actually very, very, very important. And the reason is because so many times students throw away unnecessary marks because they don't actually check the mark allocation. And the mark allocation is very important because it actually tells you how many facts you need to include in your answer. So in front of you, 
we see an example of what a mark allocation in your NSC examination will actually look like. So you can see that the example says 1 times 2 equals 2. And when we look at those numbers, it is important for us to understand what each number actually means. That is going to then help us to understand how much we need to write. Now, the first number, the number one that you see in front of you, that is the most important number for you as the candidate writing the examination, because that number tells you how many facts you have to write. So you can see that that number says one, which means that if this is your mark allocation, you will only need to write one fact. The second number that you see, which is a two, that number tells you how many marks you will get for each fact that you give. So in this case, because it is a two, it means that when you give your one fact as an answer, you are going to get two marks for it. And then the last mark, that just indicates the total amount of marks that you will receive for this question. And you can see that it is two marks. Because for one fact, if you are going to receive two marks for it, your total will be two marks. Now back to our definition question. When you look at the mark allocation, how many facts do you think we need to include in our answer? If you said one, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says 1 times 2. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level 1 definition question because of the words in your own words, and we know what the definition question is asking us to define, satellite states, and we also know what the mark allocation is, we only have to write down one thing, we are finally ready to give our definition. So what I want you to do now is I want you to take a minute quickly to think about how you would respond to this definition. Okay, so in front of you is what a typical model answer will look like. A satellite state is a country who is under the sphere of influence of another more powerful country who is able to indirectly influence or control the political, economic or military decisions of that country. Now, if your answer doesn't look 100% like mine, then it's okay, as long as your answer has the main points you must make sure that your answer includes or indicates that a satellite state is a country that is indirectly controlled by another. If that is the main focus of your answer, then your answer should be taken as correct. When you look at my definition, then can you notice that I have not connected it at all to the Cold War in any way? And the reason for this is because the question didn't ask me to. And this is the biggest thing that you must remember from a level one definition question, is that you do not have to put it within the context of the time that you are studying. A level one definition question only expects you to give a basic generic definition of the concepts. Okay, so now that we know how to identify a level one definition question and we know how to respond to it, let us take a look at the second category, a level two definition question. Now, the aim of this type of definition question is to test your ability to understand the concept within the context of the historical event. This means that when you give your definition, you must always remember to link it back to the historical era or event that is being examined. But how do you know when the question you are reading is a level two definition question? 
the words of the question will always look as follows. Define the term within the context of. When you see these words, then you know that you are dealing with a level two definition question and you know that you have to remember to always link it back to the historical era or event that is being examined. Okay, so let's look at an example. The question in front of you reads as follows. Define the term satellite states within the context of the Cold War. Now, when you look at this question, which part of the question tells us that this is a level two definition question? If you said the part that says within the context of, then you are 100% correct. Okay, so now that we know that this is a level two definition question, we have to actually answer it. But before we can answer it, we have to understand what the question is asking of us. So let's read the question again quickly together, and then we can determine what the question is asking us to do. So the question says, define the term satellite states within the context of the Cold War. Now, what do you think this question is asking us to do? Okay, so when we look at this question, then we see that the question is asking us to do two things. The first thing is to define what a satellite state is. The second thing that we have to do is we have to link our definition to the Cold War because it says within the context of the Cold War. Okay, so now that we know what we have to focus on, are we finally ready to answer the question? The answer is no, because remember, we still have to look at the mark allocation. So when we look at the mark allocation of this question, how many facts do we need to include in our answer? Okay, so if you answered one, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says one times two. Okay, so now we know that this is a level two definition question and we know what the question is asking of us. It's asking us two things, to define what a satellite state is, and we have to link it to the Cold War. So now we are finally ready to give our answer. Okay, so let's read the question one more time, and then we're going to give our definition. So the question says, define the term satellite state within the context of the Cold War. Now, if you look at that question, what do you think the answer should look like? In front of you, you can see what a typical model answer would look like. Satellite states were countries in Eastern Europe under Soviet sphere of influence during the Cold War. The Soviet Union indirectly controlled them politically, economically, and militarily. So here we are asked to give the same definition as before, but our answer is slightly different to the previous one. And the reason for this is because we have to define it within the context of the Cold War. And that is the very important difference that you have to remember regarding a level one definition question and a level two definition question. Remember, a level one definition question tells you that you only need to give a generic answer. Level two means that you have to put it within the context of, and if you don't, then you are not going to be awarded the marks. Now, how did we put it within the context of in our answer? We said who the satellite states were during the Cold War. They were countries in Eastern Europe. We are saying who they were influenced or controlled by the Soviet Union. 
And that has to be in your answer when you are defining a satellite state within the context of the Cold War. Okay, so now that we've completed the examples and you know how to identify a level one and a level two definition question, and you know how to answer it, I'm going to ask you to practice to identify and answer it by yourself. Okay, so what you need to do is you have to download the attached activity and then you have to take a few minutes to complete it. You must make sure that you follow the instructions of the activity very carefully. While you're doing all of this, I want you to pause this video and then when you have completed it on your own, then I want you to press play again and then we are going to mark the activity together. Hello Grade 12 and welcome back. Okay. So you had to download the activity and then you had to answer it on your own. So what we are going to do together is we are going to mark it and then we're going to see how you did. So the first question was, define the term containment in your own words. Okay, so is this a level one or a level two definition question? If you said level one definition question, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the words in your own words are in the question. Okay, so are we ready to answer this question yet? No, because remember, we have to first understand what the question is asking of us. So when we read the question again, what do you think the question is asking us to do? So the question says, define the term containment in your own words. Yes, the question is asking us to define what the term containment means. Okay, so now we know it's a level one question and we know that we have to define what the term containment means. Are we now ready to answer? No, because remember, we have to check the mark allocation. Okay, so when we're looking at the mark allocation, how many things do we have to write down? If you said one, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation said one times two. Okay, so now that we have identified this as a level one question, because it says in your own words, and we have understood what the question is asking us to define, the term containment, and we know how much information we must give, just one fact, we can finally give our answer. Okay, so the policy of containment can either be the action of keeping something harmful under control or within limits, or you can say that it's the policy to prevent the spread of communism. Now, remember, your answer doesn't have to be 100% the same as mine, as long as you have the main point of the definition in your answer. So you need to be able to understand or explain that containment means that they are preventing something from spreading. That's ultimately what it means. Okay, so if you got it correct, then you can give yourself two ticks and well done to you. If you didn't get it correct, don't be hard on yourself. You'll try again and then eventually you will get it correct. Because remember, practice makes perfect. And the more that we practice to answer definition questions, the easier it's going to become over time. Okay, let's look at the second question that you were asked. The question says, define the term Marshall Plan within the context of the policy of containment. Now, when we read this question, do you think this is a level one or a level two definition question? And why do you say so? If you said level two, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the question says 
within the context of. And remember, when we see those words, then we know that we are dealing with a level two question. Okay, so are we ready to answer the question yet? No, because remember, we have to know what the question is asking us to do. And when we read this question, what do you think this question is asking us to do? Let's read it together again quickly. Define the term Marshall Plan within the context of the policy of containment. This question is asking us to do two things. The first thing is we have to define what the term Marshall Plan means. And secondly, we have to link our concept to the policy of containment. OK, so now that we know that this is a level two definition question and we know that we have to define the term Marshall Plan and link it to the policy of containment, are we finally ready to answer our question? No, because remember, we have to look at the mark allocation first. So if we look at the mark allocation, how many facts does this mark allocation want us to answer? If you said one, then you are 100% correct. Why? Because the mark allocation says one times two. Okay, so now we know that this is a level two definition question because it says the words within the context of. And we know that this question wants us to define the term Marshall Plan and we have to give the definition within the context of the policy of containment. So now we are finally ready to give our answer because we know what the mark allocation is. We know that we have to give one fact. OK, so let's take a look at what the definition will look like. OK, so this is what your definition should look like. U.S. economic aid given to a country in Europe to prevent the spread of communism. Now, remember, your answer doesn't have to look exactly the same as mine. However, it must have the main points. Remember, we had to do two things. We had to explain or define what the Marshall Plan was, but we also had to put it within the context of the policy of containment. And if you look at the answer, then you can actually see that that is exactly what I have done. I have defined the term the Marshall Plan in the first part of the answer. It is U.S. economic aid or American economic aid given to countries in Europe. That is the definition of the Marshall Plan, OK? And then I have connected it, I've put it within the context of the policy of containment. I said it was to prevent the spread of communism, which is what the policy of containment was. Remember, we need to know our definitions. And when we study the definition of the policy of containment, the policy of containment was a policy to prevent the spread of communism. It was a U.S. policy, an American policy, and we said American economic aid. So again, we are linking it to the policy of containment. OK, so if you got it correct, then you can give yourself two ticks. And then again, if you got it wrong, don't be hard on yourself, because remember, practice makes perfect. And if you continue to practice, you will eventually be able to answer definition questions correctly. OK, so let's end off with a little recap. Now, in your NSC exam at the end of the year, the examiner is going to ask you two types of definition questions. And it's important for you to be able to distinguish between the two. The first type of definition is the level one definition. And in order for us to know that the question is level one definition, we have to look for the words in your own words. When we see those words in a question, we know it is a level one definition question and our answer is going to be just a generic basic definition. 
The second type of definition question is the level two definition question. And in order for us to be able to know that the question is level two, we're going to look for the words within the context of. When we see those words, we know that the definition is level two and our answer is going to be contextualized. Great Twelves, this is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for your patience and participation. I really hope that I got to teach you something in this lesson today. And remember to continue to practice because practice makes perfect. I hope that you guys all have a lovely day further.